everyone, and welcome back to Engadget's virtual stage here at CES 2021. I'm Reviews Editor Sherlyn Lo, and joining me today for the Engadget Roundtable are some faces we have seen or maybe don't get to see as much as I would like uh, on the Engadget video channel. So we have UK Bureau Chief Matt Smith joining us today. Hello, Matt. Hey, Sherlyn. Long time no see. Very long time since I last saw you this morning. Uh, also joining us today here is Jessica Condit, our senior editor. Hey, Jess. Hello. Wonderful to see you as always. Love you. And also we have, all the way from the UK as well, uh, se senior editor <laughs> Nick Summers. Hi, how are you, Nick? <laughs> hey, it's good to be here. Almost stumbled there, but you, you managed to pull off. I almost stumbled because every time I think of your name, Nick, I think of the song Here Comes the Sun, and I don't know why. I think it's got to do with an old joke from way back in our past. This is, this is the last day of our CES live coverage, at least for the stage, uh, and I'm exhausted. I'm sure you guys are. I'm going to ask you, Nick, starting with you, but usually this is like, I don't know if it's your once in a year chance, right? But it's my once in a year chance kind of to see you in person because you're based in the UK, I'm in New York. I at least get to see Jess at some other events sometimes. Nick, how has covering this remotely been for you? Both easier and harder in, in sort of different respects. I mean, it's a lot easier in the sense that I don't have jet lag, right? And there's no travel mm -hmm. involved. And I have to worry about my ESTA visa and everything, all the kind of logistics <laughs> where I'm staying, check-in times, not all, the, the, having your CES pass, where you need to go for appointments, all of that is like all taken care of, right? So that mm -hmm. part of it has been great, but it's also been a lot harder in other respects, you know? Like one of the things I was doing this year was judging the sustainability category for the CES awards. And just having a kind of sense of everything that's at the show and kind of really feeling like you have everything covered is so much harder online because you can't sort of physically zoom around venues the same way that you would do normally at the show. We're just trying to pour through press releases and that sort of thing. So in some ways it's been easier, but in other ways it's actually been a lot harder to do my job um, than in previous years. So yeah, it's been really interesting. I love that we have both you and Matt on this roundtable because this CES, uh, you know, you guys' covers can be so focused on the U.S. sometimes, but CES is a global show, right? And we, we need to think about how people from all over the world are watching this. Matt, do you have any, any thoughts for, for, you know, what these experience has been like maybe for people from other parts of the world? That's the thing. That's the interesting thing about this one is that, um, and you've mentioned it, share on some of your other your other pieces on the live stage. Is everyone is seeing things with the same eyes? Um, well, there have been a few pre briefs and bits and pieces we've got ahead of time. A lot of people are seeing these uh, devices and announcements on a live stream, you know, beamed across the world at all the same time. So you get reactions mm -hmm. from around the world, <laughs> at, at, you know, at exactly the same time. And that's kind of interesting, you know, everyone's on the same starting page. So I find that quite fascinating. Um, but yeah, it's, I kind of agree with Nick's experience of it. It's great not to have jet lag. And I swear, <laughs> just not eating giant Vegas food has, you know, added years to my life. So that's nice. Um, <laughs> right, there we go. Thumbs up from Nick. So that's all been good. Uh, but yeah, I miss seeing everyone. And I miss the kind of the hunger for the story. I like hunting around for the weird, unique, you know, devices, robots, uh, announcements, and I kind of miss that vibe to it all. It's not quite the same through a webcam. For sure. Speaking of all the, the stuff that you just said, right, robots and the quirky announcements, I mean, Google usually has a giant playground on the parking lot, yeah, yeah, and yeah. we're not going to do our little video tour of that this year. Jess, uh, I mean, what, what do you miss the most from the show floor? And, and you know, do you feel like a virtual CES has been able to replicate any of that? Yeah, I mean, similar sentiments. Um, I've actually, I remember being paired up with Nick one of these past years during CES, and we were on the same beat. So we were looking for a certain type of gadget on the floor. And Nick, you're a very discerning man. When you get in the groove, you're very focused. And I appreciate that about you. Um, but like, yeah, stuff like that, you can't, you can't even collaborate with your partners in the same way. So like not even being close to you guys and just being able to scream across the trailer, like, yo, what was that thing? Or, Hey, was that cool? Was that worth talking about all those conversations? Yeah, we could have them in Slack, but it's, it's just a totally different vibe. Um, and I mm -hmm. think like in-person collaboration is where a lot of the magic happens. Um, mm -hmm. So, so especially in our field, it's, it's a creative field as much as it is um, informative and, you know, fact-based. Um, so yeah, yeah. I, I miss that. I miss that. 
You mentioned uh, partnering with Nick, and I want to talk about why we partner with each other. Now, the way we judge the official Best of CES awards here at Engadget is that two editors, most of the time, are assigned to each award category, and those are the two people really responsible for rooting out all of the products that are being announced at the show that would you know qualify in that category. And then we have discussions, we come up with a short list, and then the whole team votes. This process is often long and arduous, especially if it's in person and it goes on late into the night. We're fighting over Chinese food uh, about why something should win. Uh, I would love for y'all to be a fly on the wall in that room someday. But this year we didn't have to. I'm curious to hear though, uh, Matt, let's start with you. What were your award categories that you were in charge of this year and, and what are some of the nominees in there? So I was uh, teamed up with Chris Velasco to do best mobile category. Um, I only had one category because I can't be trusted. So that was nice. <laughs> um, running through the nominees, um, it was a kind of a weird split between prototype concepts and anything made by TCL. Um, <laughs> I mean, we've already we talked about this recently on the podcast, Sherlyn, but let's uh, start with uh, the one phone that's genuinely a phone that's coming, the TCL 20 series. I think the full name is the TCL 20 5G. Um, it's nominated because it's an actual phone. Um, it's a phone that, you know, it's one of these great specs phones, well, greatly specced phones at a very reasonable price. I think it's, it comes in about $360. It's already out in parts of Europe already. Um, I think it's coming to the US, but that hasn't been confirmed by TCL. And yeah, there's nothing particularly wow. It just looks like a very stylish, functional, you know, decent mid-range phone. And I think it's always good to have more of these. More competition is good. And it's always nice to remind everyone, let alone in gadget readers, that you don't have to buy a new, a new phone and pay out $1,000 each time. Um, I think that's especially apt at the moment. The other TCL thing was something you saw, Cher. It's the next paper. It's a TCL tablet with a color e-ink display. Um, you took the briefing, so you got to see it in action. What was it like? It was not actually e-ink, but very similar. It was more like a paper-like display, and it was like LCD-based technology, so just very low, uh, like it's low brightness, but it's really about eye protection, right, reducing blue light and, and, and flicker. Um, and because it's able to do away with backlighting because it reflects light, uh, there is a lot of battery and uh, size benefits, right? It can make really much thinner tablets uh, than otherwise you would have with traditional LCD. Um, so, yeah, thanks for that rundown, Matt. Uh, Jess, you usually have some of the more intriguing categories at the show. What were you in charge of this year? Well, I had gaming because yes. gaming. And uh, then I also had accessibility, uh, which mm -hmm. so... I want to start with that one, actually. Um, there wasn't as much in the accessibility category just to go through. Um, I think that mm -hmm. this is a category that could use some love most years. Um, mm -hmm. There are sometimes gadgets that are built directly for the, the uh, disability community. Um, but, but this year, there, there, was, there, was really, there was really not a lot. So um, one that I found that I actually really liked, though, was this thing called Good Maps Explore. It's an app mm. designed to help visually impaired and blind people um, navigate outdoor and indoor spaces. So outdoors, you can just like hold up your phone and it'll read out cardinal directions to you. It'll read out points of interest or streets that are in front of you, just kind of helping navigate. And then indoors, uh, the company that makes it is starting to map with using LiDAR, map indoor spaces like libraries and museums and then implement that into the map. So you can have step-by-step -step directions through a library, you know, toward the restrooms or toward a certain section or a water fountain. Um, just things that really aren't possible yet. Um, this is, they're using camera-based positioning systems. So hopefully something that's accurate and a little less um, intrusive and expensive than like a beacon system. Um, mm. So yeah, it seems like a pretty cool uh, idea. And I was really into using technology um, in this way to really to really help this community. Um, and then, of course, Samsung has a robot that they're talking about that will <laughs> help you in the house, bot handy. There's this, this mm -hmm. like little butler robot that they, they're showing prototypes of. Um, and, you know, and then there's also, um, there was a product that wasn't actually like accessibility focused. Um, it's called the Mudra Band. And it's, it's basically adds um, functionality to your smartwatch that allows you to use just one hand. You don't have to, you don't have to use another hand. You can uh, kind of just control it using, using the hand that it's on. 
um, which is not necessarily, um, you know, for the uh, disabled community, but it's something that has implications in this space. Um, so, so those were the accessibility ones, but mm -hmm. gaming is pretty fun this year too. I'm what scrolling do down to like my list. Yeah. So gaming this year <laughs> for me was all about like laptops. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's all about mobile, uh, just power. And we have, so I'm going to go through the list. Intel's Tiger Lake, their H series is what it, they did. 11th generation H series CPUs. So these are going to, this is going to bring like desktop power to laptops is the promise. Um, and that's a, that's a very cool thing. Um, and then the AMD Ryzen 5000 series laptop chips, these I think are, this is a really cool uh, uh, series because it's gonna, it's gonna bring desktop power to a lot of ultra portable kind of size uh, laptops. And that's, that's interesting to me. Um, but then there's, you know, Razer has a laptop, Asus has a, a laptop. The ROG Flow is really lightweight. Um, it, mm. It's it's all about like mobile gaming for us this year. That's, that's definitely like one of the products that's firmly within our wheelhouse with gaming laptops and stuff. And and the accessibility stuff you talk about, I think it's very important that we pay more attention to it. Um, you know, as an industry, we could definitely do better there. Nick, though, you tend to cover at CES some of the less in our wheelhouse categories. I feel like is that true? Would you say? Yeah, I would definitely say my my beat is often offbeat products uh, and trying <laughs> to find some of the kind of the weirder and more wonderful things, um, which, yeah, I guess leans a little bit into my the category that, as I mentioned previously, I was doing this year, which was sustainability. Um, mm -hmm. It's definitely something that we are interested in at Engadget, but it can be quite a broad topic, you know, like I won't say, for instance, I'm not super well versed on electric tractors, for instance, right? And some of the right. agriculture and farming technology that's happening at the moment, but it's something that we want to always be aware of and make sure that we highlight when there are innovations. So um, mm -hmm. yeah, going into this category was was really interesting this year. And it really started with a bang in with Samsung. Um, I was so appreciative that Samsung spent quite a lot of time during its um, press conference talking about sustainability and the environment. Um, they recapped a little bit about their cardboard packaging for some of their TVs, which started with their kind of artsy TVs, the Cero and Serif, I think they're called, which could be repurposed into sort of um, flat pack uh, origami construction sets for kids and how they're bringing that now to all of their TVs that are coming out. And so they call this not only recycling, but upcycling, you know, having make sure that they have extra uses. Um, so that was something which was really cool. But the two which ended up making our list for or our short list for, for the category was the solar cell remote. So this is a solar powered mm. remote, which isn't a new idea. I've definitely seen this before, but it's really cool that Samsung, which sells God knows how many TVs every year, millions upon millions, is going to be shipping one of these with all of its 2021 TVs. So all of those TVs that would normally come with remotes that require batteries, which either are single use or, you know, hopefully people have rechargeable sets. Now they're going to be shipping with a remote that is, you know, doesn't require that, which is great for the environment and um, potentially will, will, you know, help people avoid tons of e-waste. So that was great. Um, following on from, from that was um, a new part of their upcycling program. They've talked previously about using phones in the community, helping people use them as part of eye monitoring kits for eye checkups and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But now they're going to help you do that from home. So if you have an old device lying around, a Galaxy Note 2 or something, they're going to be releasing apps that help you turn them into something else, um, whether that's a baby monitor, some kind of smart home monitor, something that's quite simple but still has a purpose and is smart kind of in its own way. So those were kind of the two the two headliners for us. And even though neither is particularly groundbreaking, just because of Samsung's scale, we kind of knew they were going to have a really big impact in the market. So that was cool. And then outside of that, I picked two startups, one which is called Lasso, which is working on a appliance for your kitchen, which can deal with a lot of recycling, um, plastic, glass, uh, aluminium, and steel, which is cool. And also a company called Living Packets, which is working on a reusable, infinitely reusable, infinitely recyclable uh, box, which is going to replace all of the cardboard boxes that we are having sent to our homes at the moment, right? As we do so much of our shopping online, they're trying to come up with a box that retailers can use 
you know, over and over again, send to customers, you use them for returns, all of that sort of thing, which will hopefully get around that particular problem, which has only accelerated and only worsened throughout this kind of ongoing pandemic. So, yeah, I was I was definitely intrigued what would end up on our shortlist, but I think we ended up with four really good contenders. Now, thanks to all of you for kind of summarizing some of our uh, Best of CS Awards nominees. Now, uh, there is also one category called the People's Choice Award. And shout out to the people who are watching us live right now. I guess that's all of you. Um, but if you're, you know, you still have about 15 minutes before voting closes on the People's Choice Award. The options that you can pick from are all of the nominees that made it on the uh, finalist list across all of the 14 different categories that we have covered. Go to Engadget.com. You can check out a uh, description of all of the finalists there and make your vote. Again, the, close, uh, the voting closes at 3 p.m. Eastern. So you have 15 minutes as of right now. Uh, and then come back 4.30 p.m. Eastern later today for the Best of CS Awards show where we're going to announce all of the winners. And that'll pretty much set the stage, I guess, for the rest of the year. Uh, but before before we get into some of those that future talk, I also wanted to shout out our live stream viewers that are active on the live chat right now. We've got Mark Dow, who is one of our regular viewers who seems to have been with us all day today. Mark Dell says that as a fellow Brit, he is very excited to hear Matt and Nick on the panel today. So hello. Uh, and then also hi to Yuri, Marcia K, VJ, uh, Norman Robinson, Arian. Just so many names. We are so grateful you decided to join us to get your CES coverage here. And we have plenty more coming up for you. Now, uh, we've gone over some of the widely covered devices from our Best of CES finalist list. But I kind of wanted to recap a little bit of what happened today. There is not a lot uh, of news today, given it's the third day and most companies have shared all they wanted to share already. But Asus had a, had a little surprise for us. And this is kind of cute. It's um, it's a, what, a coffee mug, a latte mug projector. I think, <laughs> Nick, I, 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 I'm going to ask you to describe it for us. I know you just, just did a lot of describing for us. But Nick, what, 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 what can you tell us about this little Asus latte cup projector? Yeah, I mean, you've almost summarized it perfectly there. It is a portable projector, which also doubles as a speaker. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure it has a <laughs> Harman Kardon speaker built inside of it. But it is the size and shape of a coffee cup. Um, and that's mm -hmm. kind of all you need to know about it. And at first I was like, oh, cool, I, I, I guess that makes sense. But the more I thought about it, the more intrigued I was by it. Because if you look at it, it's kind of similar in terms of the form factor to like a Google Home speaker, that sort of thing, mm -hmm. in terms of the kind of size and shape. And the more I looked mm -hmm. at it, the more I thought, you know, this is something which I'd be happy to have on my bookcase or on my coffee table. Right. And when you're not using it, you could sort of just kind of turn it around a little bit and it will probably blend in as an ornament, you know, or something that's just like a piece of furniture. It doesn't stand out like a traditional projector would, or maybe when someone says projector, the kind of image that you that you have in your head. And it's also cool because it is that shape, you know, my, my in theory, right? Anywhere that you have a coffee cup holder, like in your car, for instance, or even in a camping chair, for instance, right? Mm -hmm. There's probably more places that you can put it than a traditional portable projector. Um, something that I've always been impressed by is companies like Peak Design, for instance, who made a travel tripod that is the same size and shape as a one liter water bottle. So if you have a backpack, it fits into those same pockets. In theory, with mm -hmm. something like this, it fits into the same places that a coffee cup would. And the more I think about that, the more kind of neat I think it is. I, I, I do think, and, and and for the viewer, by the way, I wanted to give you the full name of this. This is the Asus Zenbeam Latte Projector. Latte is in the name. Matt, what do you think of this product's name and, and just the whole proposition? I mean, I aspire to one day own a projector, like some mm -hmm. real fancy projector that will take over a whole wall of my future giant mansion. So I'm mm -hmm. always in the market and look at them. And this one, like this one seems like quite an appealing travel projector, if you can think of that as a concept. Um, it only does 720p resolution. So it's not, you know, it's not a mind boggling resolution. It's not the best projector and the battery only lasts three hours ish so and me and nick oh, in, in the uk chat have been talking about lord of the rings today you wouldn't be able to watch a whole lord of the rings movie before the battery Aww. cut out apparently i know sorry guys bad news um but yeah i like the design and you know asus does this every now and then apart from like it's horrifying routers that look like you know dead yes. spiders upside down 
like they sometimes like just like to kind of charm with their design and yeah it's quite a cute little looking projector um i can't wait to see how much it'll cost um as yeah. a siesta edition there's no price but yeah I'm, I'm here for it i have a question about it actually i yes, i wonder it's... how much of the cute factor is due to the name if it wasn't called a latte uh, projector yeah. you think it's cute that's all i'm just gonna leave us with that yeah that... i mean it has like uh it has some hal vibes to it like if you just look yeah. at the picture and don't think of the name yeah like a killbot 3000 thing yeah Oh, I mean, uh, the fact that Latte is a name, I think to Jess's point, like, if I hadn't made that connection, I probably wouldn't have thought this was such an interesting product to begin with. It'd just be like, eh, another projector, you know what I mean? And yes, it looks better than previous projectors. Yes, it's a little smaller and more portable looking, but just does bring up a good point. Um, also, people in the in the chat also are bring up another good point. Uh, that name, the word Latte projector, sounds like they're projecting Latte into your mouth, doesn't it? That's what you think. Yeah. It sounds delicious. So I want the coffee. One. So I mean, yeah. they already have a step up. This is branding, people. This is how it goes. <laughs> if you just okay. want to watch YouTube videos of people brewing coffee with it, then you know you you, you go for it. There's, there's nothing saying you can't do that. Uh, that's true. You can just project only coffee streams. <laughs> uh, another really intriguing product that may have otherwise slipped by had not for Engadget Chinese doing a good job covering it, I think, is the Avita Admirer, Admirer 2. This is a laptop with a, with lights built in around the display bezel and three Finally. above the screen. Yeah, Matt has been dying to own one, clearly. But Jess, what what were your initial thoughts when you saw this? I want one. Um, yeah, like straight up, this laptop. It's like okay, it has three webcams. It has a ring light around the the frame, but it also just looks yeah. like you know pretty slim. Looks like a pretty good laptop. Um, right. But I think this is such a good idea. Like the entire border of the screen has a light on it. It's like a it's like a ring light for all the Twitch streamers, or if you just use it for Zoom calls, even I'm sure that would be fine. Um, and then hey, three cameras. Why not? I love it. Why not? Nick, would you ever use something like that? Absolutely, if it is subtle when the lights are turned off. I don't want to have a thicker bezel around the outside of my screen or compromise in that way. But the idea, in theory, if someone says to me, would you want you know, your dream Ultrabook, but it also has an amazing light attached to it, which can be used for yeah all of our Zoom calls, all of our meetings. If you have kids that are going to be attending classes, you know remote learning, and just want to make sure that they're properly lit and people can see them. Like the idea isn't as crazy as I think it seems on on first blush, um, yeah. but it really does depend on how subtle it is in normal use. Matt, if you use this device to Zoom call me, I would say Matt, you look like you're lit. Uh, is this is this round table over <laughs> what i was going to say is um we were talking about the latte name this is called the admira which seems so <laughs> atrocious right it's like it's all about me this is my yeah. laptop it has three cameras it has a ring light let's all watch me and look at me admire me with my admirer too yeah. that's all yeah. kind of it that's a that's the grossest part of the whole thing is the name we we should say that it's spelt something like A D M I R O R, so it's not admirer in yeah. the sense, but it basically is admirer. <laughs> right, yeah. it's almost mirror. It's, it's almost yeah. It's all very self-absorbed. That is true. The word mirror is kind of in the name. It is very. It's like admire your mirror. There's like double layers to it. Um, Horrifying. I want to also yeah. I want to shout out also to uh, chat. Um, we have Mr. Kefis one, I believe asking what our favorite announcement has been at this time let's start with jess what was your favorite announcement well uh, i'm going to say the first two that popped into my head were the mofflin little hamster gerbil thing it's a little robot that cuddles you it's very cute so that's yeah. one and then the the sony's um air peak drone which i actually thought looked really badass um it's it holds uh sony's uh, what are they? The Alpha Series cameras, and it looks really cool in action. They showed off a video of mm. a Sony drone holding a Sony camera, filming Sony's electric car. So, Sony's here. That's that's crazy. That's <laughs> impressive. Matt, what about you? What's your favorite? 
I mean, Jess stole it from me. Um, yeah, I would really like, maybe it's just because it's, you know, it's kind of a, in 2021, it feels like a year of like, it sounds like a cliche, but a year of healing, of being gentle, right? Of being kinder and like a soft, cuddly robot just kind of resonates with me more than it would any other year. Um, yeah. So yeah, I really liked the notion of it all. And have you seen what it charges in? It charges in this like little nest egg thing. It goes to quote unquote sleep inside it. I mean, that's adorable. It's it's so endearing. Um, I think the other major one, and again, Jess has already re- talked about it, is the Ryzen 5000. I think that could be a big deal when it comes to powerful ultra thin laptops next year. Um, so yeah, I can't mm-hmm. wait to see what, what laptops it actually ends up in. Um, and yeah, what kind of amazing gaming options we'll get from it. Well, Nick, how about you? Is your favorite also the Mothlin or are you going to surprise us? <laughs> I agree with Jess, but actually for the Sony stuff, um, I was, I'm was i also really intrigued by the AirPeak drone. I mean, it, it feels increasingly like DJI is the only company in town that anyone cares about, right? So many of their competitors are struggling. And like Jess said, this is going to be a Sony-built drone that takes A7 cameras, which are, you know, the A7S three, for instance, is the camera that every vlogger wants at the moment. Every YouTuber is using this, Twitch streamers, so they already have this kit. Um, and so to have something purpose-built that fits into that ecosystem, I think is amazing. Sony also mm-hmm. showed off their first consumer-ready speaker that is going to have their 360 reality audio stuff mm-hmm. baked into it. I think that's a really compelling alternative, potentially, to Sonos and these sorts of companies. And we got to see a bit of a glimpse of their electric car. Like Jess said, you know, there's so much hype and talk around at the moment about what Apple might be doing with an EV. But like Sony's already there. They're already doing it. And in previous years, I've always been a little bit disappointed by Sony. It always feels like we watch a press conference and they show a movie trailer that we've already seen, you know, and Ibo gets rolled out for the fifth time in a row. But this year, they had three things, all of which I kind of cared about. So for Sony, I think that's a massive home run. Yeah, I agree with you. I'm going to pick two my favorites, and, and I'm, they're only my favorites because they're uh, so wild. Number one, Razer's RGB mask, because it's just crazy. It's called the Project Hazel. Why not? Why not, Razer? Wow me. Impress me all the time with your with your willingness to go far out there. Um, these are these are masks with built-in you know air filters and then RGB lighting on the outside, but they're also transparent so that people can see your expression and read your lips, which is good for people who need to read lips. Um, and then the other thing for me, uh, and this maybe just flew under the radar a little bit, but Samsung is backing an outside startup. This is part of a CES announcements for its C Lab, uh, more experimental division. Uh, it is going to back a online K-pop training service. And this is one of my favorite things so far that I don't think a lot of people are talking about yet on our show. Uh, <laughs> Yo, tell me more right now. I need to hear more about this. Just, just you and I are signing up for this. We're going to take classes together, online yes. K-pop training classes together. You'll see. We'll be the next KDA. <laughs> I can't wait. Next KDA. Um, oh, no. I know. We we have just a little bit more before the end of this roundtable. So I just wanted to ask you guys, how do you think a lot of these products that were announced, right? Not all of them are coming to the public. Not everyone's going to be able to interact with some of this new technology that was introduced. So what do you think 2021 looks like based on the technology? What do you think is the one piece of technology that will really impact everyone's life uh, the next year? So let's start with uh, you, Matt. Oh, 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 why me first? And now I'm panicking. Um, you can I have one if you does okay, Yeah, you can still pass. Go. Well, because I, I have one. I don't want you to steal it. It's that, um, <laughs> the, the Samsung Solar Cell Remote is a very cool piece of technology that's actually coming to market. That's actually going to um, immediately start kind of helping mm-hmm. in the goal that it has, which is reducing uh, battery waste and all this stuff. So mm-hmm. I, I think that's a really cool product and it, it's it's actually happening. So I like that. Let's go to you, Nick. What, are you ready to answer this question? Yeah, I was going to say, you know, we've looked at a lot of gaming laptops this year and a lot of gaming chips, um, which are probably out of the reach for most consumers. But eventually, 
that tech is going to start filtering down, right? And what was expensive is going to get cheaper. And at the moment, both PC and laptop sales are going through the roof. They are stronger than they've been for years because people are buying them for their kids who have to study at home, either they're working from home, that sort of thing. So everything that we're seeing in the PC and the laptop space right now is eventually going to come down to a point where people that are buying laptops right now or for later this year are going to benefit from that. So, um, yeah, I think that's going to be really important this year. Matt, how about you? Uh, I have one now. Thank you for coming back to me. Yes. Um, I think <laughs> the one that caught me, and this was another one that was kind of hidden under the headlines, like the K-pop training service, whatever that is, um, is LG is building a kind of entry-level series of OLED TVs. The A1 is going to be the first one. We still don't have prices, but this is going to be a kind of very basic OLED that kind of has the TV features you saw in top-end LG OLED TVs, OLED TVs a few years ago. Yes. Um, yeah, but at a more comfortable price point. Um, they might not be the most cutting-edge TVs for the, you know, the gamers and the cine cinephiles among us, but yeah, I love the idea of just everyone having an OLED because I just prefer watching things on them. Like the idea that my parents might have an OLED when I visit is kind of cool. Um, I'm still using an LED TV myself. So it might be time for me to upgrade as well. And yeah, I, it's LG again. So I, again, I trust them to deliver on these kind of products. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do my one last shout out, which is uh, L'Oreal announced that YSL is creating this device that will allow you to make thousands of lipstick shades at home for yourself. It's going to be pretty expensive, I'm sure, but this technology could help reduce waste in the beauty industry. I'm excited to see it move forward. Uh, so I'm hoping for more on that. Now, that's all the time we have for the Engadget Roundtable. Thank you so much for joining us today, everyone. And thank you to my dear panelists for joining me. Thanks, friends. <laughs> all right, so next up, we'll have more content for you coming your way, but be sure to come back at 4.30 p.m. Eastern because we will be announcing the official Best of CS Awards winners here on the Engadget YouTube channel. Thank you again for watching and stay tuned for more.